Hello, today we are going to be doing a lesson in uh, malware persistence using registry keys. Uh, I'm going to be going off of this article right here. Um, it has a lot of good references to which registry keys you may want to use. Uh, I'm going to be going off of this first one right here. And then if you want to learn more about the registry keys, how they kind of work, the more in-depth version. Um, I'd reference this article. Both of these will be in the description. But for this purposes uh, of the video, all you really need to know is that they help some configurations on the Windows machine. So uh, in this instance, we would have our malware already on the box right here. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Um, and for example, if we wanted to do this manually, let's say, we would open up the registry editor which you can just type regedit or registry editor. You can open it right here. And there's five main keys, uh, and then they all have their own sub keys under this. So the one that we are going to be using is under the current user, because in this scenario, we're assuming that you don't have system admin privileges yet uh, on the machine. So if you do, then you might want to use a more um, maybe more buried key uh, somewhere deeper in the registry config but for now we're just going to go to user and then uh, instead of doing the whole path I'm just going to copy and paste this but we're going to go to current user software Microsoft Windows current version run and what this does is this will run uh, every single time a user logs in to the current user logs in so right now and this is set by default uh, OneDrive executes in the background uh, upon login so if we were going to do this manually we would just do a right click new and we'll just say string value and we'll say test and then we'll edit the value click modify and the data would be something like C, uh, let's see, if we wanted to do the actual full calc, let's just execute the, execute the calculator app real quick. So we copy it and we're just gonna paste it in here, hit okay. So upon login, uh, Windows will run through all of these and execute OneDrive and also calc.exe. So if I log out of this test account, and log back in. When we log in, we should see a calculator pop up. If we just give it a couple seconds, there we go. So as you can see upon login, the calculator will auto start. And as you could probably tell, what we're gonna do is basically just change this from the calculator to the reverse shell. But I don't wanna do that. Um, with the GUI because that could be, uh, you might not have GUI access or you might wanna have it be more automated. So we're gonna do it in C. So I'm gonna delete this key real quick. And that's okay, because we created it. So I'm gonna pull up my Visual Studio code and I'm just gonna create a new file called persistence.c and our first uh, import statement or include statement is going to be windows.h and that's all we actually need for our includes we're going to do an int main and then we need to do a couple things first so um, you can learn all this through the microsoft windows um, or window win api documentation which i will link the two um, functions that we're going to be using but our first function is going to be reg create key a and uh, then our next one will be reg set value exa so first thing is the creating the key so what this is going to do is we're going to give it a path which is that path right here and if the key already exists then it's just going to grab or put a handler to that key and then if the key does not exist, then it is going to create the key for us. So um, there's a couple of inputs we need and I will actually pull up the Win32 API. 
Uh, let's see. I'll actually just pull it up for the sake of uh, being fully, you know, a good programmer. Uh, we're just gonna look up reg create key and see if we can find it real quick. Okay. So if you ever want to learn how to read uh, Windows API documentation, I recommend. This is how I learned just through malware development. Um, but basically, let's see, is this the right one? Uh, looks like it, yep. So basically what we need to do is pass in uh, a key, a uh, sub key, which is the, so the key is this big, one of the big five right here. And then the sub key is basically the rest of the path. Uh, and then a PHK result. So I don't know if we actually need to, that would be our pointer actually. So what we're gonna do is based off this Win32 API, we can literally just scroll down and see what needs to be filled in where. So for the H key, right, we need to fill in one of these five. So obviously that's gonna be H key current user. So uh, we can actually just copy and paste that, make it easier on ourselves. And then our next one is the sub key. So uh, we are going to make this text and then in here, in quotes, we are going to put the full uh, file path. So it'll be software and we need to do double slashes to escape Microsoft. Let me just make sure I'm spelling this right. Microsoft double slash windows, double slash current version, double slash run. And again, you can, uh, you know, based on this article, switch it out with a bunch of different stuff. It's up to you. Um, and it's pretty easy to, you know, once you start messing around with it. Uh, and then we're gonna add a null byte at the end, which is, um, I believe in here, uh, if you read through the whole documentation. Basically, null byte just says this string is terminated. So you can stop uh, reading it. And then we are going to add one more thing, a pointer to the actual key itself. And let me add in the pointer uh, up here. So we're gonna make an H key and we call it H key. So what this is gonna do is say, get a key and throw it to this uh, handle right here. And then when we go into the set value, we're going to give it the handle, so H key. And then I'm just gonna say test value. This will be the actual like key name. So that'll be like one drive under this, we'll say test value. Um, and then let's see. Our next step will be to add a zero. Um, and again, if you if you're pulling up, let's see if I can actually find it in here. Yeah. So if you're pulling this up, you can see um, certain things will just tell you it's reserved and must be set to zero. So that's pretty easy. And why this Windows 32 um, documentation is pretty useful for stuff like that. Um, so this is set to zero. And our next one is going to be reg sz, which is basically the type, as you can see here. Um, and then we are going to add our message. So um, this is going to be a const char. And I'm just going to name it message. And then it's going to be our actual file path. So in this instance, we are going to name it. Uh, let's see if we can get the full. Actually, I'll just do it here. Oops. Yep, let me see if I can get the full. Okay, C users user desktop. So in here, we are going to add a double quote and then C double slashes windows users. Uh, let's see user desktop and then reverse dot exe and then another escaped double quote. And then we are also going to add our null byte at the very end again. And now the final thing we need is our message size. So I'm just going to name this a variable message size and get the string length of message, hit tab. And now we just need it to add in message, M-E-S-S-A-G, and message size. And that should be it. Um, a final little cleanup I recommend doing is reg close key and then doing each key. That's another API function you can look up, but it only takes in one, uh, which is just closing this key that we open to edit that value. And this should be all we need. So I'm gonna use um, mingw to compile this. 
so let me just double check. Uh, I'm going to do x86, uh, 64, let's see, dash w64, and then gcc persistence.c. And we should have a, oh, hold on, I think I missed a, nope. Let me just double check my code. Oh, well, we need to return a zero. That might have been it. Nope. Okay, let's see, const, oh, well, it doesn't help when you misspell things. Let's see if that works, great. Okay, so now we have a.exe. And obviously this code would go like maybe under an option within your malware, if that's how you wanna program it, it's up to you. Um, but I recommend like, you may wanna throw this in front of your code so just to get that persistence out of the way so that if something happens, you can still get back. Um, but real quick, let's see if we can run this. So I have this in a shared folder with my VM. So if I just go to my Z um, directory, I have a.exe. So we can just make sure this works by, let's just refresh this real quick, make sure nothing's in here. Run a.exe, we have no output, which is expected. And we have a test value of running reverse.exe. Great, so to test it, Let's see if our shell actually works. So when the user logs in, we should be able to get a, um, a shell. So let's try logging out again. Let me double check this path. Windows, users, user, desktop. Okay, great. And I don't believe it's case sensitive. So if we sign out, our listener is listening. We're adding a password. And if we wait and we cross our fingers, we might get a reverse shell. Okay, doesn't look like it. Let's see if we need to edit our registry key. Let me see, modify. C, Windows, Users, User, Desktop, reverse.exe. That should be it. Hmm. I wonder what's wrong here. Yeah, so it looks like a reverse shell works. So let's try that one more time. It actually might be uh, case sensitive. C, oh, psh. well there is actually no uh, windows here, so. Sorry about that. Let me fix this code real quick so we can do it correctly. C, users, user desktop. Okay, let me recompile and we'll run this again from the top just so we can practice. Uh, like it actually, make sure it actually works. Run a.exe, view, refresh, users, user desktop, reverse.exe, okay. Now we have our shell listing. Let's log out, sign back in, and hopefully it works this time. And this will work across um, reboots and stuff like that too. So there are options um, to change the persistence, but there we go. We have a reverse shell, awesome. And we should be the user of user, awesome. Okay, so that was my, um, basic demo for programmatically adding registry keys for you know persistence in your malware. Um, quick disclaimer, uh, please use this for educational purposes only. Uh, do not use it for malicious intent or harm uh, that is illegal. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'm happy to help you work through any code or stuff like that you have. And if you have any other video ideas or requests for how to you know get into malware programming or things like that just let me know and i will see you in the next video thank you